Disney. This Forrest Gumpian ember indicates that we got into the movie after just 20 seconds. But logo and behold, it's another stupid logo, extending it to a full 55 seconds of prehistoric logoing. With every sun comes a new day. And with every animated kids movie comes opening narration. Seriously, it's in the rule book and everything. A hope that things will be better today than they were yesterday. Misplaced optimism. This is my family. The Croods. And roll credits. I'd say we hit the check marks of animated sins, kids. Just throw in a few fart jokes, a slow motion shot of someone getting hurt, some physics defying BS, a couple of nonsensical songs, a protagonist argue before the final act of the movie cliche, and we could wrap this shit up early. Wow, I was not expecting this movie to start the same way as Sinister. The Horks. Swallowed by a sand snake. They're called Graboids, Emma, and it's the Hork's own fault for being too many degrees away from Kevin Bacon. Basically anything fun is bad. Catholic school. But this is a story about how your life got flipped, turned upside down. The opening expositional narration is doing such heavy lifting, you might as well have made it a sitcom theme song. Crudstone, Emma Crudstone, she's a caveman teenage prodigy from the town. Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. To be fair, this is how Nicolas Cage starts his days in real life, only the prehistoric wildlife are the terrified neighborhood kids. Ooh. We find out they're getting ready to go hunt for some breakfast, but wouldn't grabbing a couple of these critters now help the cause? I mean, since you have the jump on them and all. I don't want to get too into the details, but Eeps in her late teens, and cavemen and women are well known to be hairy as hell. So what's up with the lack of armpit adornment? Does she have a secret bottle of nair back in the cave? Aga! Holy shit, this woman was named after the University of Georgia mascot, or maybe vice versa. Either way, I feel like there's a sin in there. Also, these characters' names are all caveman -y, like Eep and Ugga and Grug, but it's apparent this family has an extensive vocabulary, so why the grunty designation? Nations. Holy shit, I'm not even speeding this up. These assholes make Sonic the Hedgehog look like the sloth from Zootopia. Color in the air. Using your grandmother as a coin. Tails thunks in. If this family has survived because Papa Crude is so smart and ordered and all, why wouldn't they just send the person who is best at egg retrieval? This is like the Eagles picking a random player to quarterback each game. Wait, that just might work. Egg theft. I blame Bear Grylls for making this okay. Release the baby! <laughs> this movie is so insane, I might actually be having a good time. Just shake it off, Jeremy. You got a job to do here. I have to admit that was funny. Okay, fine. Connected tales. This is not how evolution works. I'm starting to think this movie was not concerned with scientific accuracy. I'm just imagining all the efforting takes this cast had to do in the booth during the audio recording and figuring out that Nicolas Cage probably made $30,000 per individual grunt. Who's hungry? But why is it over now? There were like six different animal groups involved in this chase, and you're still out in the open enough for several of them to make a play for this act. Did they all just know it was time for the opening set piece to be over? Oh, that's all right. I, I ate last week. Appreciate your self-sacrifice, which I'm sure lines up perfectly with ancient man's survival instincts. But there was still a bit of yolk on that shell. And what about inside? I'm just saying, if you're truly hungry, crack that thing open and sip it like a Slurpee. Please come back tomorrow. Precocious adolescent yearns to be part of another world in an animated movie cliche. Man, I don't want to be that guy, but there sure as hell are a lot of upskirting shots of animated Emma Stone at the beginning of this movie. Could they seriously not have put her in pants or actual shorts? What about jams? Anyone think about giving her leather jams? Eep! Op or ah! And that means I love you! Tonight we'll hear the story of Crispy Bear. The Care Bear formerly known as Pyromaniac Bear. I get it, Dad. I get it. I will never do anything new or different. The Detroit Lions. Can we just talk about this gap? I guess the owl, lemur, puma, or whatever couldn't get in here, but there are plenty of night predators that could slip into this safe haven fairly easily. I'm just saying, Grog's got some perimeter hole issues and he needs to plug those up ASAP. This bright light doesn't wake anyone else up in the cave. Does Eep have superpowers? I guess she's really strong, but she's scaling that cave like she's the amazing Spider-Man or something. Not gonna lie, that's really pretty. But shouldn't this city of embers have caught her hair on fire by now? This is a Pepsi commercial waiting to happen. Also, why is she acting like she's never seen this stuff before? I'm sure lighting has struck a tree or something. It's the making of fire that was the breakthrough for ancient man, not the knowledge of fire, right? You talk! Yes, he does, and despite being from completely different tribes, you both use the same modern English. How the gods have smiled upon us on this day. Also, why didn't he say anything when she was about to f***ing brain your ass a couple seconds ago? Ow! Emma, you must be confused. Your playful, flirtatious banter is supposed to go with Ryan Gosling. This is Ryan Reynolds. Understand the mistake. It happens all the time. Sorry, movie, you can't have a human that doesn't understand what fire is and a sloth who knows how to perfectly imitate defibrillation. I mean, you can, but there's a ding tax applied. <laughs> Dude, isn't the whole thing that they're not supposed to make noise at night? This kill circle may look cool for the first few seconds, but wait until it gets to the shot of Black Widow futilely cocking her f***ing handgun. Ah! Ah! Conk blocking. You can't keep me inside! 
ride forever? Most of the U.S. circa May of 2020. Stop! Cavemen are derided for their diminished mental and physical capacity, but apparently they can throw a rock from a tremendous distance perfectly enough to impart the importance of stopping before their families are crushed by a rock. Also, I know they're in a hurry, but how did they not see that huge f***ing rock that was about to fall on them? Hands. Bloody hands. On a stone, touching me, a touching you. Aw oh man, they're all covered in ash. Maybe this will solve caveman racism like the 1997 movie Volcano did for humans. You really need to see this. You better come take a look at this cliche. Oh sure, now you can just toss giant rocks out of the way, but earlier when it was the door to the cave, you were completely powerless. Dude, the crude brood should be food screwed by your feud. And not to be rude, but then the movie would conclude completely viewed and have renewed my mood. What is it with animated movies and complete instant environment changes? They literally went from stark rocky dust and desert to lush rainforest in less than a mile, just because a minor earthquake happened. But also, they survived this and without a goddamn scratch. So the youngest daughter is a dog? Everyone else in this family seems mighty erudite, but this youngster displays only animalistic tendencies, and they're down with that? Somewhere in the secret film lab, James Cameron is rolling his eyes and saying, oh, so I'm the derivative one, huh? I'll take care of this. <laughs> Nick Cage recalled his entire performance in Vampire's Kiss to channel this dialogue, catching something without an opposable thumb. Good thing these piranha-keats are taking their sweet time forming their patented carnivornado instead of just attacking like they did the wobbly whale earlier. You know, so Guy could come save the day and all. But if the sun is already down, why wouldn't he already have his fire lit? Hey, I have to admit, this is a better sequel to Pitch Black than the Chronicles of Riddick, but for making me think of that f***ing movie, this gets a sin. I don't care what century this is and how f***ing big the crops are, corn does not work like this. If you want it up your ass, you have to work for it. So hey, this is just how my college girlfriend hooked me into our first date. Not the regular college girlfriend that I always talk about. This one, this one was different and really scary. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, look, I wasn't expecting much from this movie, and it looks stupid and pedantic and color by numbers. But I have to say, at times, there's some very good comic timing that puts it well above the standard animated fare. So, while I'm dubious of the series and the upcoming sequel, I'll begrudgingly take a sin off. You want me to turn this family around? Do you? Because I will turn this family around yeah. so fast! And just as I praise this motherfucker, we go right back into tired family tropes. Damn it, movie. Pick a lane. No one will be seated during the assortment of non-existent animals plug their ears to avoid hearing the pointless bickering, but I have to sit here and listen to a portion of the film. Oh, she's locked her door! So, movie really is saying that not only were cave people cannibals, that this grandmother who's lived with this boy for many years is ready to eat him right now? What does it do? Well... <laughs> Miming something you could just explain quicker. Damn it, why does Ryan Reynolds always run first into hot redheads that he's into in movies. Sandra Bullock in The Proposal, Blake Lively in Green Lantern, Margarita La Viva in Adventureland, Kristen Stewart in Adventureland. This is usually how my Thanksgiving dinners turn out, only this is much less arguing about politics and religion. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. Look, I've heard this story before, and there was a lot more death and witches and hand washing. So can we just get to the part where Macduff takes dude's head off? He's loose! But they already let him loose when he got that giant f***ing bird for dinner last night and told the story. So why are they still carrying around this guy when he's proven to not be a threat? Drop the log. Rushing your dog because you don't have all day to stand here with a stupid plastic bag over your hand. I know these crudes are crude, but they obviously have a sense of object permanence, so this joke falls as flat as their feet. This works for everyone. Have you ever tried to walk on stilts? It's like trying to f a tornado. Ah, cats! F man, how far away is this mountain? Are they trying to make it to Mordor? Okay, I know Grug abhors anything that's new, but at this point he's seen that Guy is at the very least a resourceful asset to his family. Sure, any dad is hesitant to let their daughter get cozy with a new dude, but do we have to go over this ground again, especially given the stakes in this movie? People who have no clue how to swim jump into deep water and somehow learn to swim. I know this can happen, but the fact that it happens to all of them at once is some woolly mammoth size Too slow! Everybody, keep moving forward! No f***ing way guy knows where he's going here, so telling everyone to move forward makes as much sense as my GPS telling me to proceed to the rock. Movie pulls the double convenience of a mosquito showing them the danger of the carnivorous plants, followed immediately by a flower frog showing them how to avoid it. Double your convenience, double your scent. And just like that, Eep was pregnant. That's how it worked back then. I know it was hard for you to bring us along, but they had the best day of their lives. Day? They made it all this way in a f***ing day? This stretches the bounds of day reality worse than that f***ing Ferris Bueller did. Is this insinuating that a single torch was completely obfuscating a brilliant starry sky because I'm calling some cosmic bullshit on that nonsense? Hey, I thought it was a different cartoon that warned the lead character to watch out for that tree. I got ideas. I got thoughts. 
Dude, I know we have this whole grog versus guy dynamic, but this was stale like 30 minutes ago. We had some momentum movie. Keep moving instead of reinventing the wheel. The rules don't work out here. They kept us alive. Oh, is it time for the protagonist to have a big fight before the final climax? Cliche already? Well, I guess the good news is that means we're about 20 minutes from closing up shop. We would be dead if we listened to you. We have to follow Guy now. Okay, the cave did get crushed, but you don't think they would have had a warning before that boulder drop? I understand that Guy is the new hotness, but when did Grug do anything to get them killed? Sure, how many other nonsensical traps can we get these f***os into? I don't care if it's caveman times, this journey has as much bull as the fire swamp and the Princess Bride. Last thing my parents told me. Jeremy, skip now! Considering this tar is rapidly bubbling, how are they gonna burn it to death right about now? <laughs> Deus Ex Turkina! Take us to tomorrow. How the sh they have any idea about what's going on? Guy thinks it's the end of the world, but why would you run for the mountains if that was the case? What sense does it make, even for a primitive race? There it is! The sun! The problem with the Bruce Almighty sun is that it makes even less sense than a Bruce Almighty moon, both for normal astrological scientific reasons, as well as melt your face off and retina frying reasons. Grug, listen to me. We've got to get back to that cave. The f cave is she talking about? The one they saw like 30 minutes ago? That was on the other side of the mountain. And that was before they took their detour into the tar pits. No more hiding. No more caves. And then Grug's family, exhausted from exposure to the elements, became a meal for a nocturnal predator one week later. Because honestly, caves really are a great idea. What's the point of all this? That's a truly solid question. I mean, that's a top-notch response to what I've seen so far. Well done. You send yourself. To follow the light. Oh! I can't change. But if I can't change, you can't change. Everybody can't change! I get that they can hear the whistle, but there's no way they can see him all of a sudden across this f***ing chasm. You did good. These cavemen have such a spectacular vernacular that I'm shocked she didn't know to say. You did well. You, Moomy. This whole time you've shown this beast to be a predator to the whole family. And even if he's scared of the dark, why would he be cozying up to Grog? He could just take the fire for himself if he knows that it can be brought back to life by blowing on it. RUN! The erstwhile evil Hellcat understands this. I mean, I've left a lot of this works on the table so far, but I can't just sit here while this plan goes off without a hitch. There were plenty of birds that wouldn't have gotten stuck in the tar, and you're pretty exposed, so they still would have still devoured you. And even once some of them did get stuck, their wings wouldn't be able to flap. And I haven't even started to bring the simple matter of weight ratios into it. My point is, as always, this works. Douglas? Wait, Thunk found a name Douglas when you were all split up, and we haven't seen him since. So, as far as this movie is concerned, you've never even heard of Douglas. I guess what I'm saying is... Why did you say that name? I know there are actual stakes in the context of the movie, but I can't help but remember that caveman Nicolas Cage is trying to outrun global catastrophe by escaping in a tar-coated ribcage carried by prehistoric carnivorous ostriches, which contains a giant jungle cat and various beasts that we've barely met. It's not safe here. How the hell do you know that? How would anyone know that? Really sweet scene and all, but how is Thunk using his shell when we just saw that Douglas still had it mere seconds ago? Why do the ravenous death birds scatter as soon as they land? There's a bunch of fresh meat here. You really need to see this. Yes, I definitely don't know how to describe water and stuff, even though I've seen all of it on this journey. This is my family. I don't know what it is, but sudden end of movie narration is even worse to me than early movie narration. It's like premature ejaculation versus never ejaculating at all. Sure, movie, I'm positive there won't be any credit-centric shenanigans that will keep the kids in the theater far longer than the ushers have time to wait until the next screening. At the place where you're supposed to have the toilet paper, you got this little shelf with three seashells on it. Despite popular belief, we love movies, and we love talking about them. Check out the Sincast podcast, where I'm joined by my fellow Cinema Sins creators to talk about movies, rankings, rants, and more. Available here on YouTube, or search for Sincast wherever you stream podcasts. Suddenly, there was a terrible roar all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats. It's no judgment, but you kind of look like a stripper. Mom! A high-end stripper. For governors or athletes. I have made fire! It's our only chance. Come with me if you want to live. Get out! Get out! Be gone! And she slipped. <gasps> and she fell. And she flew. 
idea man, modern man. Oh. I am a FBI agent. We need one of your ideas. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs>